You know, it's sort of funny. Every few videos, there's always someone that comes along and asks me why I don't own a snake or if I would ever consider owning a snake. And that tells me one thing very loud and clear. I do not post enough content pertaining to Kira, my Mexican black king snake. So in today's video, we are going to be doing an update and feeding for Kira. Welcome back to my channel everybody. My name is Dion and you're watching Reptiliatis. I make videos about specialty pets such as reptiles, amphibians, and different kinds of cool invertebrates. So if that's something you are interested in learning about, definitely consider subscribing down below and dinging that little notification bell afterwards. I post videos every Tuesday and Friday. All right guys, well I don't want to dilly dial too long. I think what we'll do is prepare Kira's food, which is a frozen thawed pinky mouse. I apologize in advance if that makes anybody feel uncomfortable, so please feel free to uh, skip to the feeding at this timestamp or skip the feeding altogether at this timestamp just to be considerate of everyone. But don't forget that, you know, if you eat meat at home, it shouldn't really be regarded any differently. The animals are ethically euthanized for the purpose of nourishing these types of pets and they require that type of nourishment, right? So it's sort of more or less the same as uh, thawing out some chicken or beef. And so on that note, I'd actually like to ask you for today's question of the day. How do you feel about these types of feeder animals? Are you someone that leans towards the sensitivity of people feeding their snakes or other reptiles, rodents? Do you take issue? You know, let's have a respectful conversation about this in the comments down below. There are also a lot of people that feed birds to their reptiles or even pigs, quite frankly. Prenatal pigs or piglets that are used as feeders for larger constrictors. How do you feel about that sort of thing? Is there a large distinguishing factor between using that in insect prey? Do you feel that it's cruel? If so, why? You know, I'm, I'm curious to know. This is all something to consider when engaging in this conversation we can have down below. And as always, I'll give your comment a heart. So we'll leave it at that for today's question of the day. Ooh. Yeah, I need to catch up on a little bit of sleep. I've been staying up pretty late lately, trying to catch Nona in her lay box. And the worst part is, I think I missed her. I think she caught me while I wasn't filming and took advantage of the little window there. I haven't checked the lay box yet and I'll make a video about it all for you guys, but we'll have to see. And then, you know, this happens because you're not sleeping enough. Dang it. Good thing it's the weekend. I gotta catch up on my sleep. Uh, fun. Anyway, let's head to the kitchen. So the first thing we're gonna do is take our pinky over to the sink and thaw it out in a small cup of cold water. Pinkies thaw out pretty fast, so after a few minutes I check to make sure it's properly thawed out and then replace the cold water with warm water to bring up its body temperature. This brings the mouse's body temperature up to a more natural state and will ensure a great deal of receptivity from our snake. All right guys, so this is Kira's little enclosure. This is where she lives. Her heat pad is regulated with a Inkbird thermostat to make sure that it doesn't overheat. It's kept at the right temperature. Let's go ahead though and remove this enclosure from here. You can actually see she's out. And uh, yeah, we'll say hi and try feeding her. We're gonna go ahead now and open it. Just a Rubbermaid container if you want to see when I first got her and how we set up the enclosure. There's a link to the video up above. Let's go ahead here and take a look. So Kira is just down in this side. Hey Kira. So the first thing I wanted to do is kind of show you Kira's enclosure. This is your typical bin. A lot of folks will raise neonates or juvenile snakes in these types of bins. They're really great for holding humidity, creating a small safe space for the snake to feel, well, like I said, safe. And 
I kind of wanted to take it a little bit to the next level to provide a bit of enrichment within that environment. So, I mean, we have some fake plants here, it just provides different texture. It's also sort of a rough surface for the animal to rub up against for shedding purposes. Naturally, she has her water dish here, which has just been freshly uh, cleaned out and filled. And then we have her hide. You can see the probe is down here to measure the temperature in there and keep it where it needs to be um, for the heat pad regulating. And the heat pad is naturally under this part of the enclosure. And then she also has this little Zilla like log just as a kind of shelter along the side of her enclosure too. I don't hold her too often. Handling my pets isn't necessarily important to me. I do it enough with her that I hope to maintain the calm disposition, but you know, honestly, I probably handle this animal once a week at most. I obviously check on her regularly, but I don't go crazy handling her all that much. Uh, just wanted to kind of point that out so you guys don't think that she's getting handled a few times a day or anything like that. It's certainly not that often. Okay, let's get the feeding bin ready. We'll gently lower her into it. I can actually see how much she's grown since the last video. It's pretty crazy. I mean, that was filmed quite some time ago, but you really can see the difference. Look at that, she made a heart with her tail. <laughs> That's pretty funny. All right, friends, so now all we're gonna do is take our warmed up mouse and set it down on the paper towel here. I like to dry them off. Just kind of like pat them down before offering them to her. There we go. So this is just again a frozen thawed pinky mouse. But yeah, so we can just gently grab it with the tongs and bring it to her. Kira. like that. Sometimes I'll go in here and gently go like that just to kind of animate it more. I like that's more natural. But when I don't do it well, she ends up grabbing the tongs and you don't want that. There we go. I'd say that's pretty good. on its way down, you can see it right there. All right guys, we're gonna go ahead now and place Kira back into her enclosure just to make sure she's not stressed at all since she just consumed prey. We don't want her regurgitating or anything like that. It's never happened, but we don't need to take any chances. So let's do that now. Alright girl, let's go ahead and gently bring you to your home. There you go. And 
You may have also noticed that uh, in the last few months since I've had her, uh, it's kind of crazy to think that I've already had her six months, time flies. But in those last few months, you can see that every time she's shed, you can probably see the difference here that she's losing a lot of that speckling and um, the spots she had on her body. Now this often happens. Um, there are many Mexican black king snakes that are born with more coloration and speckling. Uh, and a lot of them, they lose it over time and become the gorgeous, completely black snakes we've learned to keep and love. Now, don't get me wrong. I actually really do think it's special. Um, I love that she has some speckling and if she keeps it, that's great. Um, but yeah, it's kind of neat to just observe that that's been happening. All right, guys, there we go. Time to close things up and we'll have our closing chat. Well, friends, there you have it. I sincerely hope you enjoyed watching a video on Kira, my Mexican live king snake, how she's been doing. I know I haven't posted much on her lately, but I'm sure that that will hopefully satisfy your desire to see how she's doing. Probably going to be thinking about upgrading her in the next while. I really do want to set her up in something naturalistic with UVB exposure. I just want to pick the right time for it. I'd also like to take a quick moment to thank my Patreon supporters. Thank you so much to my patrons. You guys are amazing. I really appreciate your support. I'm excited to do our Q&A soon. So I just want to take that moment to, again, show my appreciation for all my channel patrons. If you'd like to support Reptiliatus further, you can also become a patron for as little as $2 a month. All right, guys. Thank you so much for your support and viewership. I look forward to seeing you all on Tuesday for our next video. Have an awesome weekend. Take care.